Hey, this is Corey Woods, and you're listening to Her Per Parade. Enjoy the show. We should work in teams. I tend to think of myself as a one-man wolf pack. You're about to enter Information Overload, a worldwide transmission with Her Per Parade's featured Breeder of the Week. Here's your host, Jason Ross. What's up, world? Welcome back to H3. I'm your host, Jason Rossi. We are streaming live on RossiReptiles.com and, as always, on iTunes. This week's featured Breeder of the Week is here, and he's our second international guest. Corey Woods from CoreyWoods.com is our special guest this week. Corey, welcome to Her Per Parade. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Yeah, well, thank you. Awesome. Well, I was flipping through your birthing records. i got to say, you have a ton of cool projects going on. We'll get into that. But first, tell our listeners the history on the Red Exanic Ball Python. Um, back, it was way back when... Um, I ended up uh, purchasing a pair of blackbacks from the Sutherlands. They had got in a, uh, uh, a black striped male from the wild and uh, bred it, and uh, they ended up, uh, you know, producing a clutch out of that. So I bought a, a pair from them. There was only, uh, I think, if uh, memory serves, because it was a, a while ago. I think it was back in. Uh, 98 or 99 that this happened, that uh, I, I believe that there was uh, 3.1 uh, blackbacks in the clutch. And uh, so I, I ended up uh, purchasing a pair from them. And uh, in the meantime, they, they sold out of the project. They sold the original male. They sold the, uh, the other males in the clutch, and, and I got the pair. So I grew them up, ended up breeding them together in, uh, I believe it was 2001, and uh, produced the first uh, red antics. So, uh, you know, at the time, you know, I was only, you know, I was a small breeder, and, uh, you know, I maybe that year hatched out, you know, six clutches or something, and so, you know, you, you know how it is when you're, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you're like a kid at Christmas, you know, you're, you're looking in these eggs, and it's like, oh, my God, what's going on in here? You know, there's something that's not supposed to be in there. So uh, I was all, like, you know, excited, and, you know, you peek in and you see something, and then it comes out, and it's like, man, I've, you know, this is something I've never seen before. And there was, there was two red azanthic uh, males in the clutch. So uh, I ended up phoning up the snake keeper and saying, man, you know, I don't know what happened, but, you know, there's some funky things going on in, in this clutch. So I took some, some, at the time, you know, digital cameras weren't uh, where they are now, and you know, nobody had cell phones, let alone cell phones with, you know, that were camera phones and all this stuff. So, you know, I gave it out with, like, my, you know, one megapixel digital camera and take a couple real, you know, real, real crappy photos and uh, send them off to everybody, and everybody looked at them, and the, the pictures were terrible. And uh, everybody looked at them, and they're like, oh, you know, we can't really tell what's going on. So then I thought, okay, I'm going to have to actually sit down you know, take some uh, some nice photographs of them. And so after I took the uh, the second set of photographs, you know, I ended up sending them to kind of everybody around for their opinion and, uh, you know, kind of figured out, hey, this is something new. And, uh, you know, that that's kind of how I got into the, the red azanthic stuff. And then, of course, you know, me telling the snake keeper it came from their, you know, a pair that I got from them that they got from the wild. They ended up buying uh, stuff back from that project and, uh, you know, ended up, uh, you know, they ended up, I think I, they must have uh, produced a whole bunch of uh, red azanthic stuff by now. But, uh, yeah, and then uh, there was two uh, red azanthic males in the clutch and uh, Ralph Davis ended up getting one and I kept one and kind of went from there. So kind of a, a little bit of the of the history anyway. That's excellent. That's, it's got to be something else to be able to sell back to breeders such as the ones you just named that's kind of don't words for that 
Yeah, I mean, it's always, you know, I'm always looking for, for new stuff. And, you know, Ralph's a great breeder. I've done, you know, really good with all of the, the animals I've ever gotten from him. So, I mean, it was, you know, good that, you know, he got animals from me. I ended up getting animals from him. And, uh, you know, I know he's done a lot of stuff with the Red Xanthics. And, you know, I've done a lot of stuff with the Red Xanthics. And, you know, the, the Red Xanthic gene... You know, it's not for everybody, and I mean, we, we've got, you know, you've got albinos and you've got pieds, and even if you don't like snakes, you know, you can look at a pied, and you can be like, you know, wow, that's that's different, you know, and the red xanthics are they're an acquired taste, you know. There's a lot of guys out there that really like them. I really like them. I do a lot of stuff with them, but again, they're not for everybody, and I mean, there, there's a lot of mutations out there that, uh, you know. We all have our own tastes. We all have our own likes and dislikes. And, I mean, I, th- I think that's a good thing. I mean, if we were all the same, life would be boring. So, Well, that pastel lesser pet red exanic sugar male is outstanding, I have to say. That thing is a knockout. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's uh, he's nice. And uh, I, really, I really like him. And, you know, with some of these genes, you just don't know how they're going to mix and some of them re- look really good when they're they're mixed, and you know some of them are just kind of okay. But uh, yeah, that guy there, he, he turned out really nice, so I was really happy with that. And you know, really, back when I got my sugars, I uh, you know I ended up paying a little bit more for them, but I got really really uh, high white sugars. And uh, so far, the sugars I've produced have been really high white, so I've been uh, I've been really uh, happy with that. So it pays to buy with your eyes. Yeah, yeah. So what are the characteristics to look out when buying a het red exanic if someone knows nothing about them? Well, it's really weird because, you know, I've got, you know, basically my stuff originates from the original red exanic male produced in 2001. And Ralph Davis got the brother, so he, he got one of the original males from 2001. And my stuff, my het reds, and Ralph's Het Reds look pretty similar. Now, I know Ozzy Boads, he got some Red Azanthic stuff from Ralph. And the stuff that Ozzy produces looks way different than the stuff I produce. And uh, so I'm always getting emails from guys, you know, is this a Het Red? And I always have to make that disclaimer. <laughs> if it If it came from me... You know, this is what mine look like, and if they came from Ozzy, this is what they look like because they're, it's all the same stuff. But, you know, maybe I took mine and bred it to, you know, darker stuff, and, you know, Ralph has different animals, and he, he's bred it to different things, and Ozzy's got different animals, and he's bred it to different things, and, you know, the mutations kind of changed a little bit, you know, from the different breeders that have worked with it. So my animal... My het reds that I produce, they've got a, you know, a, a well-defined black stripe, a really, really busy side pattern, and uh, some, of the, some of the het reds, they do have a, a slight kind of gold stripe down the black stripe on their back, but, uh, you know, the, the het reds that uh, Ozzy typically produces you know, it's a, they've got a black stripe, but a very reduced side pattern. And so sometimes that kind of throws people off because they're all hat reds, but mine look different than uh, some of the other ones out there. And it's just because we've bred it to all different stuff. And, the, you know, it's kind of like, you know, if you were to have, you know, really dark Mojaves or really light lessers, you know, we, we've all bred the stuff to different animals. And, uh, you know, they've all picked up different traits from the different females we've used. So, so yeah, sometimes it's, it's hard to define just because there's, there's different looks from uh, different people's animals. All right, well, I've got to say, and you probably already know this, but that pastel red exanic dot matrix is sick, man. That's you got something going on yeah. there, huh? And that's, uh, again, you know, you, you take these animals and you breed it to, to different females, and, you know, you just, you think all this stuff is normal. <laughs> and then it's like, you know, you could have yellow bellies in your collection. You know, you could have sparks. 
you know, all of this very subtle stuff that when you combine it with another trade, it's like, you know, something wacky comes out. And uh, yeah, the dot matrix stuff, it's, it's in my collection, but I honestly, I can't tell you where or how. <laughs> I don't know if it's a granite gene mixed in with something. I know I can, I know I can produce them. And I know, you know, I, I bred two uh, pastel red azanthic dot matrix animals together. And the animals from them are more extreme than the, um, you know, the parents. So it's definitely there. I've produced it from multiple clutches, but I don't know how or why or where. So it, it's it's something i got to figure out. And uh, I've hashed it.